Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in Psalm 137, verse 1 today. This is our fifth study going through the entire Bible in the last 38 years. The New Testament is already completed for the fifth time, and that, along with the previous studies from the Old Testament and the previous four series, are all archived for you at the Bible versebyverse.com. So <clears throat> four complete series going on five there for you to choose, click, and listen. Again, that is at the Bible versebyverse.com. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke, no, I'm sorry, Psalm 137, verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. This psalm speaks about Israel's captivity in Babylon. They were in a foreign land. And when they stopped and they thought about the old days back home, they thought about Jerusalem, they thought about Zion, they thought about their place of worship, the Holy Temple, and they thought about how they did not want God, and they didn't want to worship God when they were back home. Instead, they wanted to rebel, and they killed the faithful prophets that were sent to them. And they listened to the liars who told them that they were safe in their sin. They wanted to rebel against God. They didn't want God, but now they want him. And they want him back in Israel. But it's too late now. They are suffering the consequences of their sin. And those consequences are going to run their course. And I don't know. If anybody in hell regrets the fact that they put their sin before God and they refused to repent and they refused to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and ask him to be their Savior. I don't know. I think from Luke chapter 16 that there's a possibility that some there do regret. They're suffering in pain and torment, fire. And it's nonstop and it will never end. And some of them, it seems like, are regretting. But it's too late. Too late. And sin and its consequences must run its course. And it will last forever and ever and ever. Never any change. Only, always, horrible pain. It's too late. You can weep about it all you want. You can regret all you want. But once you're being punished, once you're in hell, forget it. It's too late. The Israelites can regret not being back home. It's too late. Too late. Verse 2. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. They hung up their instruments when they were down in Babylon because there wasn't anything to sing about anymore. Nothing worth singing about when you're being punished for your sin. Three, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required us of mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion, mockery by their captives, by their conquerors. The Babylonians, who had defeated Israel and taken them to Babylon, were rubbing salt in their wounds. The Babylonians were saying, sing some of those spiritual songs that that God of your likes you to sing to him so much. Sing to that God who would not or could not protect you. Why don't you sing to him? For how shall we sing 
the Lord's song in a foreign land. They would not sing holy songs to the heathen. Whether it is in the form of words or songs, we should not expose God's truth to the mockery of unbelievers. There comes a point when the correct thing to do is to simply be quiet. Verse 5, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. In other words, may everything that is important to me perish, or at least cease to function if I don't serve God. If my priorities are messed up, then may something happen to jolt me back, is what he is saying. Sort of along the lines of what I prayed when I was first saved. I didn't know much about anything, but I knew I didn't want to go to hell. That was the big thing for me. And I remember saying to God, I said, God, if I'm going to turn my back on you and I'm going to walk away from Jesus Christ and not believe in him as my Lord and Savior anymore, if I'm going to just totally apostatize like that, then kill me before I do it. Kill me because I don't want to go to hell. And I was dead serious. Five. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. In other words, may everything that is important to me perish. And then he says in verse six, If I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. In other words, he says, may I lose the ability to talk if I don't remember you, God. If I don't, if I don't put you first, may I lose my ability to talk. He wants to be home. He wants to be able to worship where he used to worship. And he doesn't want to lose those desires that he has right now because he knows that those are the correct desires. And he was asking God to keep him from losing those things. Seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. And God never did forget that. And Edom will be destroyed because of their attitude concerning Israel's punishment. When Israel was attacked and taken captive by Babylon, their neighbors to the south, Edom, stood by and watched and cheered. God warns people not to taunt their enemies when they are suffering. Don't taunt your enemies even when you defeat them. Even if they were ungodly, even if you're godly, don't taunt your enemies when they are defeated. Mocking someone who is suffering, even suffering punishment from God, will itself be judged by God because God hates that sort of thing. Taunting is something that God hates. I don't know how many good things the National Football League does these days. They do a lot of things that I disagree with politically. But one thing that they have, one rule that they have passed that I like, taunting is penalized. If you tackle somebody and you stand over them and you look down on them and you clap your hands or you point at them or you do anything like that at all, you're going to be penalized. And it's a big one. God would go along with that. He hates it. Verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewards you as you have served us. In other words, he says, Babylon, I hope the one who gets you for what you did to us gets a big reward for his work. There's some bitterness there, and there should not be. 
The problem with this kind of thinking by Israel is that they were blaming Babylon for their troubles. Yeah, Babylon was bad, absolutely. But don't blame Babylon for your suffering. And that's what they were doing. They should have been blaming themselves because it was their sin that brought their suffering. Babylon was just the rod that God used to make it happen. They shouldn't be thinking about Babylon and and blaming Babylon. They ought to be blaming themselves completely and totally. They ought to be so broken over their sins against God and so remorseful and, and so penitent that they're not thinking about anybody else who was involved in their punishment, but only their sin that brought that punishment in the first place. That's the way it should be. Babylon never would have had a chance against Israel if it, Israel had been walking with the Lord. Israel brought all their evil upon themselves with their horrible, unrelenting sin. So don't blame the instrument that God uses to punish you for your sin. Blame yourself for committing that sin. Verse 9, happy shall he be that takes and dashes your little ones against the stones. Okay, I guess they haven't quite fully repented and taken ownership for their sins and their suffering. This is a terrible thing. Unfortunately, what the writer describes here was accurate as far as what people felt. And unfortunately, also, it was a common thing among heathen conquerors back in those days to do stuff like this. They oftentimes did the most unspeakable evil against the people that they conquered. I I just can't imagine this. The writer is not saying that those things are good or that he hopes that those things happen. And God is certainly not saying that those who conquered Babylon will do it with zeal, that God is saying that. Babylon will feel what Israel felt when when Babylon did what it did to them. And this actually goes along with what Scripture says, which is, whatsoever we soweth, that shall we also reap. But again, if Israel is rejoicing in it, no, that's wrong because God doesn't rejoice in it. Evil sin is is so deplorable in what it causes people to do. Take little children and dash them against the stones. My Lord in heaven. Sin has destroyed mankind. Okay, we'll stop right there. Study all of God's word with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Remember, you can go there and study four complete series going on five, going through every verse of the Bible. And also, when you take a break from studying, you can go to the front page and click the donate button and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And also, Please pray for this ministry because your prayers and your support, both of them are your support, are support, actually. They would mean an awful lot. Your prayers are a dynamite combination when combined with giving out the word of God without watering it down. God can really use that to save souls and to sanctify the saved. So I'd appreciate your prayers and also your support. Again, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Okay, well, thanks for studying with me. I'll see you next time here on Scripture Verse by Verse. Thanks for studying God's Word with us. We pray that it has been a blessing to you and that the Word of God has drawn you closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember, you can also study the Bible with Michael at our website at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose from five series going through the entire Bible. As Michael says, choose, click, and listen. Study any part of God's Word or begin in Genesis and work your way through the book of Revelation. All you ever need is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word at thebibleversebyverse.com. Join us again next time for more of God's Word.